Welcome to Windows 10 Preview. I'm Andy Wigley, Developer Evangelist out of Microsoft UK. I'm Jerry Nixon, also a Developer Evangelist right here in the United States. And we're going to look at uh, some of the new stuff that's coming to XAML in the Windows 10 UAP, specifically the XAML Transform 3D. Transform 3D. It's, a very, it's the cutest thing that we've added to XAML so far. It so is. It really, really is. So uh, is. No, seriously, let's talk first about some of the new controls that we have in XAML. Our toolbox is full. We've got a lot of cool things, and we just want to briefly talk about those. Some of the new features coming to XAML, very cool. And then we'll get into Transform 3D, which can really change and give opportunity for developers who are wanting to build an immersive experience. Really neat stuff. So let's start with some of the new controls. Specifically now, we have the Split View control. Split View is sort of a, um, it's a navigation affordance. It allows us to see a menu on the side. You kind of have the uh, the hamburger menu, which I think is hilarious. It has a little glove. Looks like the, what was that? What is it? That's like the hamburger helper <laughs> menu. And uh, But, you know, that's the idea. It really has no UI at all. It's up to the developer to skin that to look the way you want it to. That's the split view control. But we also have the relative panel. This is part of our adaptive story. The relative panel allows us to rearrange our app to rearrange our UI yep. um, in a very responsive way, in a very simplistic way, so that our, our XAML tree is simplified, and, um, and we can also interact with it with visual states in a more simple way, so we don't have to worry about, how are we going to get this over there? Do I have to add a column, a row, whatever? Sorry. I don't have to change the orientation of it's, my It's a really, really, yeah, really great control for moving stuff around the screen, different orientations, and making it look great. Yeah, so that's a fun little taste of some of the new controls that we have, but there are also some new features. One of the new features we get now in um, UAP is drag and drop in XAML. Ooh. That's a big deal. This is drag and drop between from one app to another. Yeah, yeah. we didn't have anything like that no, before. No, awesome. I mean, this is really going to be great. So that, now that we have it, it's a full implementation. If you're a WPF developer, this is an implementation you're pretty much accustomed to. And now it's completed as well here on the WinRT side. So we're having a, a good time with that. That'll be fun uh, when the implementations come around for that and we can play with it. And so we also have this new thing around binding. So mm -hmm. we know how powerful binding can be, but we also it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. You know, it can also be a very painful thing um, if uh, for performance, especially if, if you have a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, data binding is a key ingredient of getting a nice architecture, nice separation mm. between your views and your view models, between your you know your logic and your data and the actual uh, the UI. So it's key for that. But yeah, it's like you say, if you have a kind of complex page with a lot of data bound items, uh, you can start to struggle a little bit with performance, which is why we've got this compiled data binding yeah. to take out a lot of the the runtime reflection and the slow stuff that was going on before. Yeah, so uh, the syntax is slightly tweaked. The old binding, the classic binding, the legacy binding, the, bi the regular binding is all still there, right? But the, this is the um, compiled binding, and um, it's great. I mean, it gives us a lot of, of opportunity to use binding without the, um, the burdensome cost. Out a lot of the overheads. You got it, yeah. yeah. That's right. And so there's a right time for both, right? We're not sure. getting rid of anything, that's for sure. Um, all right, so interesting set of features, interesting set of controls. Let's talk about Transform 3D specifically. So we have Transform 3D, and that's just part of a family of transforms. So before we talk about what's new, let's talk about render transforms. Um, well, actually, let's talk about layout transforms. Layout transforms were the ability to, for us to apply changes to our controls that impacted the layout of our overall um, UI. Well, this was very costly because as you would move something, as you would rotate or scale something, everything else had to be remeasured. That's not supported in WinRT, partly because there's such a negative performance implication. What we do have is render transforms where we can lay, we can take this, set it off, send it off to the GPU and allow it to process something that it can do in its sleep at no problem at all. And we can move things around, scale, rotate, and skew items very easily and not impact the layout. So we have render transforms and there's several types of them. We have the translate transform, that's the ability to move things around, basically has a property of X and Y that allows us to move. We have scale, which basically gives, also has a property of X and Y, so that we can give, for example, one X and one Y is just 100, but a two X and two Y means double the size. It becomes very powerful very quickly, and a neat way to implement zoom and be able to leverage the GPU at the same time. Rotate has the angle, so that's a single property that we are able to um, 
manipulate, and then skew, we can skew on the X and the Y axis as well. All of those, can we can move the origin around to make sure that that render takes place. So we, it may be centered, and so you rotate on the center. But you may want to center it, or you may want to rotate on a corner or something like that. You can always change that based on the render origin. So that's render transforms. We've had that all the way back to WPF. Uh, let's take a look. So this is a render transform. So I'm inside Blend, and uh, let me just build something out. So for the sake of this being Microsoft, I'm going to build the Microsoft flag here real quickly. So three rectangles, and I'll group them in a grid. And let's apply some render transforms to this grid. The first thing I'll do is go to Translate. And so let's just add some numbers. I'll go positive here, and you can see the this is positive on the X. It's moving yeah. to the right. I can go negative on the X, and it moves to the left. Pretty nice, you know, being able to move things around. Often users are changing margin to move things around, or developers, I mean, and that's not right. You want to use Translate to take advantage of the entire infrastructure this way in the most efficient way. So here's, I can rotate, I can give in positive and ne negative angles, move things around, maybe I'm writing a clock or a stopwatch or something like that. It's an easy way to manipulate it. And then here's zoom. I'm zooming only the X here, so look, I can go up, and then uh, this is 1.5 on the X, and there's 1.5 on the Y, so I can zoom both ways. So now I've been able to translate, I've been able to rotate, I've been able to zoom, and look, here's the skew. skew. So yeah. I can skew here on the X, easy enough, right? You, I mean, it's leaning because of the wind or whatever, right? Yeah. And then I can also do it here on the Y and do a negative, um, negative skew here on the Y. All right. And so let me straighten those up a little, back to zero. And uh, anyway, so that, all of that is right there in our properties dialog. You go straight into transforms and go uh, mess around with our render transforms. Again, none of the changes the layout of your application. So you may have, let's just say, a stack panel yep. where this, this, and this. The middle one, you start zooming, nothing moves because it's only a render transform and it doesn't impact the layout. Yeah, so you just, yeah, it's just the GPUs resizing, moving stuff around. It's nice and cheap. Very Another pretty. piece that we already have in our toolbox today is not only render transforms, but the projection transforms as well. So we have the projection plane, uh, which is a wrap of the matrix transform. So this is where you do all the math and you lay it out exactly the way that you want. And so you can create an almost 3D effect on an object. Now, the projection plane is a wrapper for you that's done a lot of the math on your behalf and given you the X, Y, and Z so that you can kind of manipulate that. This is still 2D. We are not in a 3D world at all. Um, the projection plane has a fixed field of view of 57 degrees. So, um, you know, if you're familiar with uh, manipulating this way, you know what field of view means. Uh, but it basically is like your perspective of where you are. And um, I think people love projection plane. It goes for a great demo. And I think if nothing else, uh, just doing a demo will. will uh, yeah. Allow you to see it. So I'll just take this right here and just go down. It's here in the properties pane. And look, I can grab the little earth ball thing there and start moving it around. It has a 3D feel. It kind of looks like it's leaning back away from us. Yep. Here we go. I can kind of have it lean to the side and I can lean right. And you, I don't know if you saw there, but um, I bring it all the way to the side. You can see it's still thin. This is not a 3D environment. It's just me manipulating a 2D environment to give a 3D feel for it. So I can manipulate both the X and the Y and the Z and do anything that I want to to have a feel for it. A lot of the complex animations that you see are a type of projection plane uh, manipulation so that you can right. be like, it looks like you're pushing a button in and it kind of does this sort of uh, manipulation to it. So we already have this render transforms and this uh, projection transforms. So that's well. nothing new so far, that's all. Nothing yeah. new so far, this is same old, same old, yep. although for a lot of developers, they're looking at this saying, what? Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. All right. So on the UI element, we now have a new property called Transform a 3D. Okay. And it is important that this is not a perspective, or I'm sorry, I'm looking at perspective. This is not the projection transform. The projection transform, as powerful as it is, um, actually flattens all of the objects after it does the rendering. And so this is not what we do in Transform, and I'll show that off here in just a second. So there are two core things. Um, you create the container, and the container has this per, uh, perspective transform 3D property that you set. It has three properties of its own. Uh, the depth, so you know how far in it goes, and then you also have then the property on the child elements inside it. So in a way, we talk about the container as the scene, and you define the scene to say how deep that scene is, and then you start composing the different objects in the, using the composite transform 3D in each of those. So 
If you're a web developer, you may already be familiar with Preserve 3D, the CSS tag. Um, this is very similar. Uh, it's not identical, but it is very similar to the point where it's almost identical. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite. Okay, so first let's define the scene. So we create a 3D environment. So here's our box all the way to the back, all the way to the front. And we first figure out how deep it's going to be. Maybe it's 100 pixels. Maybe it's 1,000 pixels. Well, I tell you what, if you make it 1,000 pixels deep, then things have to be really far apart in order to look like they're apart at all. If you make it just a few pixels deep, then things don't have to move very far to look like they're really far apart. And I'll show that in the demo. Then you define what the offset is going to be, the, the, how much it's going to lean to the left or the right, whether or not it's in the center of the screen or not. And then we start adding child elements, and each of those child elements then is translated on the z-axis forward and back inside the scene. So now we've created where we want it to be inside the scene, and each of those is properly composed with the right perspective. And I think when we get to the demo, it'll make more sense. The syntax is pretty straightforward. I think it is. So first you start with, at the top, we'll start with defining a perspective inside the container. The most important thing here, skip all the way to the end, is saying that the depth is 1,000. So first thing first, we decide how deep is our scene. Then we start defining in the second and third one what the, um, what the role or where the placement of the children go. So that's the composite transform 3D on each of the children. And so both... You have to do both. You have to set up the Transform 3D, Perspective Transform 3D on the, ch on the parent, and then come down and set up the composite on each of the children. So in this case, I'm saying whether or not they're translated and how much, how much they're translated, say, on the z-axis. So you can see this is a translation of one, a z, and then a z negative one on the two children. But with a depth of 1,000, you wouldn't even know they were separated at all. It's so far. But again, you can do this to anything yeah, you want sure. and play with it all you want as well. All right, so let's compare this to the projection plane, the way the projection plane works today. So you might have thought from our previous one, well, we could already do this, but you really you couldn't. You could just take an individual object. And the projection plane really takes things and kind of flattens it. There's no concept of depth or anything like that. Instead, you have to manipulate the skew, uh, the, the skewing of the different objects based on your own calculation of how far they would be. And if you've ever tried to do, let's say, um, parallax, then you know immediately the limitation of the projection plane. So if I had parallax, I would implement it like this, but using, because I have perspective, as I move, parallax works properly, right? Because the blue, just then when I moved it out, the blue box needed to move quite a bit farther than red in order to look like it was really moving because it's closer, right? The back or the background or what's further back in the distance or the, of the scene moves a little bit slower. We could artificially, not artificially, we could manually calculate this in previous implementations, but it was a lot harder work than you really wanted. Maybe you'd use a value converter and pass in some value that you wanted to multiply by so it didn't move quite as much. Okay, so I think this will make the most sense when we look at the demo um, and we can kind of see the power that you have here. So let's go ahead and go into the demo here for Transform 3D. I've got it, this, this, um, my demo running here. So this shows perspective. All three of these columns are doing the exact same thing and have all the properties set exactly the same. But you see on the left, you can see it's tilted. On the right, it's not. You can see here in, in depth, it's the same thing. All of these set exactly the same. As I start manipulating the depth, I start changing the distance between the objects. And the ones on the far left start moving further to the left, just like you would think they would in a scene, because perspective is, is maintained as well as depth. Pretty cool. So what if I did want to do parallax? Well, parallax is pretty straightforward. I can flip through something that is, um, and I can allow it to maintain. So you can see that the front is moving quite a bit faster than the back. And this is what you want. So if you were building a game or something like that, you needed the mountains to move slowly, but the trees to move quickly, you could do it. So again, these two are all set up correctly or identically, but I'll move one by changing its plane, its rotation X on the projection plane, and I'll move the one on the right, changing its transform 3D. The biggest thing you should see right away is that it's recalculating what it should actually be in this new rotation. On the plane projection, because everything is flattened, as you bend it, you start, or, or as you change, start to rotate it on the X axis, you can see it doesn't maintain that perspective. There is this issue of z-index. So I've got a few, few uh, squares here, or rectangles, and as you move, it looks like I've built a cube. But look what happens when I start rotating it the other way. 
So again, they all lay on top of each other the way you would think. Looks like it's a cube. This is not a 3D environment, though. So you can see the Z index is a fixed index, right? And so the Z index now makes it look like this isn't a cube at all. It's some sort of, you know, it's a wreck of a looking thing, really. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth is, um, when, if you rotate one way, it's a cube. So you might be thinking, transform 3D. Finally, we have 3D in XAML. We do not have 3D in XAML. That's not what this is. This is a... This is a type of advanced plane projection that maintains the 3D perspective as you apply additional, um, additional transforms to it. So it's, it, I think it's especially interesting when you look at um, rotating something that's done with projection, uh, using a projection plane versus a transform 3D and how it's maintained with transform 3D but flattened with, a, um, with projection plane. Pretty powerful and pretty cool. cool. Yep. Yeah. The, um, so right now we have projection plane. It flattens. Transform 3D does not flatten our, our uh, transforms. And one other tagline here that we might toss in is um, Transform 3D does not manipulate the Z index of something trying to create a 3D space for you. All it is doing is applying a 3D transform on your 2D elements. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? It's a lot, very powerful. If you're trying to write a UI right now and you want it to be deep and immersive so that you have a parallax effect, so that you have an item that's, that's being skewed and as it goes to this side, it needs to be skewed differently. You could calculate that math, but it's nothing simple. Yep. And uh, this does 